the city has really lost that respect for the township at this point. Mm -hmm. And um, <coughs> they're vital to our city. <coughs> and it, it's sad for, for us to be in this situation. Okay. How about you, Mr. Daniels? Uh, I'll say right now there, there's a serious fire brewing and it happens to be with our fire department and it's not a physical fire it's, it's like you said it, it's the trust is burning down I mean it, we need we need to stop it and put the fire out and I you know I would hope that the firemen around the area can assist in that um, we we are dependent upon delivering fire and EMS services to the citizens within the city limits for 20 years we've been supplying services to citizens outside of those city limits okay it's not part you know if you look at the rules and regulations you know there's a difference in doing the right thing and or doing things right and doing the right thing uh, doing things right would be us looking just strictly at our city uh, you know that's our tax base that's the people that we need to serve that's the way it should have been done for over 20 years is looking at just that scenario um, but doing the right thing we, we've set up this system that we've been taking care of person or taking care of individuals outside of our city limits and we've grown the entire communities accustomed to that um, and all the township trustees all the people out there and for us to just yank those services out from underneath of them to me I don't feel is doing the right thing uh, we need to have some type of transition and the only way we can do that is if we work together with a collaborative type mentality we cannot be in the city saying take it or leave it um, you know it, if we didn't need those services because we get reciprocal type services from the surrounding fire department um, you were or somebody mentioned you know if, if you're not going to serve them on the fire service why would they have an interest in helping us with the uh, dispatch service I mean you got to realize that if, if you're going to take a hard stance, it can come back to haunt you on some other avenue. We're not an island right here <coughs> in the city of Hillsborough. So I think that, one, we need to take an aggressive stance of going out and trying to really collaborate with these surrounding counties or townships. Um, part of that would be setting down with the township trustees and seeing what they need to get either a levy pass because most of the townships like right now in EMS services and right now is what's that fair price don't you, don't you think and and anybody can chime in on this but you think you really probably should understand what it actually costs I think I, I, yes that's exactly where I was headed with that um, is you know and and even if we look at it strictly what it does cost you know that, that might be a figure that's too high for the current situation you know it, we got to really look at what what are some I think if we were to just because especially right now when we say what's it cost th with this burning down of the trust issue you know if we say this is what it costs what makes us think that they're going to trust us on those figures so I think if, instead of using just internal house type figures I think if we just went out and said okay well what are the, all the local townships or surrounding areas why are they charging for tax levels? the firehouse problem here at this debate mm -hmm. and that's the uh, and that's part of the problem this has been so incestuous this whole problem N nobody has any trust in the current city administration as to what is true or false about the fire department I think there's a, 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 a I think there's a common belief that um, our current administration um, really coddles and really ha is biased towards our fire departments. Um, I don't think I'm alone in probably expressing that that uh, outlook. I think that it is so has been so convoluted and has gone on for so long. And to be honest with you, I am so tired of this firehouse issue and fireman issue, and and all the issues involved with it. Uh, keep coming to the front page of the paper every three weeks for the last few years we need to resolve it and move the hell on we yeah, need to just way. we need to resolve yes. it's not what I'm going to do first of all you bring in experts you know this is part of the problem we don't have county we don't we have a disconnect with the county the county uses very from what I understand really good 
outside arbitrators. Um, now, whether or not we want to use them is another story, but I think you need to bring somebody from the outside, sit down, let's get this worked out once and for all. This is beyond my expertise. I, 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 maybe Rod's, maybe Terry's, I don't know. Well, let me interject this one point again, and I, and I want to get back to this, uh, this thing that I brought up about costs. And I think somebody, I think it might have been Terry who mentioned with regard to third party. Yes. You know, kind of you know, take everybody that that state uh, yokes uh, is a big advocate of performance audits. Um, you know, where they would literally come in. And obviously, it does cost some money to do that. Would you not think it would be a good idea? You've been a businessman that on your website says for 32 years, and I don't think you could be in business without knowing what your costs are. Right. And in order to be able to price out your product properly. Now, obviously, you know, we're in an option to get with the townships themselves, see exactly what it costs to have our EMS, our, our, our uh, ambulances roll out of our fire station yep. and go to and cover these various townships. Do you think that would be a viable option? Yeah. I, I, I think it's it, uh, imperative that we do so, whether it's third party or in-house, however we do that. We need to know exactly how much it costs, but we also need to get um, more information from uh, insurance, Medicare, Medicaid type people, because even if we say, well, it costs us $500 to do this, when you build that, everybody knows you don't get what you build to the insurance company. Sometimes you got to pay out, out of pocket, but they're only going to cover 80%, et cetera, et cetera. So, and they know that too. So we have to increase the price to be more than what it costs so that we get the money that it actually costs and we actually can break We did have a question from one of our readers um, for Rod. And I know as a city council member, you um, ended up having to miss a number of city council meetings last year due to your military service. Yes. And is there a possibility that you might be deployed um, or have to do that again as mayor? And in that case, what would be your plan of action? Uh, well, there's always that possibility. I, I don't see it happening currently. Um, currently with my unit, I've been promoted to uh, head of communications. Uh, a lot of my role there is helping to train the current guys in the unit so that they're better prepared to utilize equipment and so forth that they go overseas. Uh, but that, that doesn't mean it couldn't change anymore. I mean, anything can happen. Um, I, I know missing, missing the uh, council meetings was, uh, I hated to do that, but as far as decisions that I've made in my lifetime, joining the material or military is definitely one that I want to change. I, I, I feel that there's an honorable. Is it true that they gave you a cane when you first reported to your <laughs> negative? They definitely did not do that. <laughs> okay, very well. Um, so. But I'm no, disparaging your age. Is it, I mean, you're still a young man, but uh, I, I tell you, you man, you're. Uh, you were kind of old. Military training is something that, you know, any young man or woman uh, going through today. Uh, if his outside occupation and as it pertains and how it affects his job, and I, I would like to take, uh, I would like to use that as a point to jump in for a second because there's obviously been um, some um, um, concern about whether what I've done. Uh, you, you read the next question. Uh, no, I have not. Well, no, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I had a funny feeling we were going to get there anyway. <laughs> <laughs> We're moving in that Let's direction. We're discussing careers here. Bingo. We're going to grab the whole yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, and this isn't exactly what you would think it would be. It says you stayed on your campaign website that you have been self-employed for 32 years. What did you do prior to becoming an entertainer? Well, well I, I don't know what you do uh, now. Well, uh, yeah, I've been self-employed for uh, since I was about 18. I first had a uh, on the grounds where the world headquarters of Procter and Gamble start uh, stands today. There used to be a White Castle restaurant, and I uh, worked uh, in a warehouse there. And I had a janitorial business, and I would I scrub toilets at night to put myself through UC. That was uh, my very first <laughs> business. And uh, I didn't like scrubbing toilets a lot, so I then went and started a trucking business uh, down at Fourth Street under the uh, underpass there at 